Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're here today in the F-14B Tomcat. We're armed with six AIM-54C Charlie variant AIM-54s. We're going to see a lot of people talk about how good the F-14 is or was. You know, we're going to see, can it still be competent today? In today's combat environment, we're fighting a Russian Sukhoi-33. The Russian Sukhoi-33 uh, armed with 10 Fox 3s. If you want to count as Fox 2s, he technically he has 12 missiles, which is crazy. Uh, I have, you know, what feels like a measly 6 AIM-54C Charlies. Um, six, and again, this was an unrealistic loadout for a Tomcat unless they strapped it up with 6, knowing that an attack was coming and a Tomcat would take off and fire some of those just because it's too heavy to land back on the carrier if it took off with six and had to come back with six it just wasn't going to be uh, possible would have had to jettison these million dollar missiles into the ocean for no reason so we're up here it could the tomcat could carry six phoenixes but what i'm saying is that it wasn't very often and if it was it was really a photo opportunity more so than you know an actual combat situation where it needed four or sorry six phoenixes right that would be crazy but today, since we're fighting technically a modernized Russian naval threat, the Sukhoi-33 with the modern Russian R-77-1s and the Russian 27 EAs, uh, the EA being the same as the R-27ER, which was a Fox-1, but the EA has a different seeker head, so it's actually an active Fox-3 missile. Uh, so he's got, you know, he's got a, a lot of modern stuff that he's going to shoot at me, so I thought let's bring six Phoenixes to give ourselves the best chance see how uh, relevant the Tomcat can be against today's modern Russian fighters. We are climbing up to as high as we can go right now. I'd like to get into 40,000 feet. Right now we're just passing through 31,000. I have Phoenixes selected on the HUD. You can see PH6. We got nails on the nose according to Jester. Jester is my Rio. He is a radar intercept officer. In the F-14, the pilot in the front just flies the plane. The guy in the back controls the radar. This little screen you see at the bottom here is my TID, tactical information display. It shows me what he sees. I can't actually control the radar. So I'm just depending on him to do all the heavy lifting in that department there. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that the AIM-54 Charlie variants uh, are very similar to the AMRAM in the sense that if you break lock with that Phoenix missile early, it will switch on its own radar and try to find the target. Uh, that's similar to what the AMRAM will do. The AIM-54A variants were incapable of doing that. If you lost lock, they went stupid. They weren't able to turn on their own uh, seeker head. We actually have them on radar here. Nice. Uh, Jester is seeing him. He's got him in a TWS track here. Bandit 255, 49 miles. 49 30, miles 000. at 33,000. Perfect. He's up high. Uh, he's locking up 12 o'clock. And he's locking me. So, this is actually an ideal situation for me to shoot a TWS Phoenix at him. Uh, TWS and the F 14, kind of hard to maintain lock with this thing. It's not really designed to, uh, you know, keep track of small maneuvering targets that are going to change altitude and aspect very quickly. Uh, but we're going to give it a go because we got six Phoenixes, so why not? Uh, and we got quite a long distance, so I can just hold a nice easy crank and uh, hope that Jester can hold that lock. There we go, Fox 3, that Phoenix is off, and it's gonna climb. We're going to hold a crank, reducing altitude, getting a little bit, maybe like a 30 degree offset to the left here, continuing to track that missile, 
Like I said, the TWS track of the Tomcat can be defeated by changing altitude suddenly or aspect changes suddenly. Uh, he doesn't appear to be doing that, so we are holding the lock. You can watch his behavior on the screen down here. Alright, continuing that lock. Once we get a little closer, I might switch over to STT or single target track. And a lot of people, honestly, I might have even fired that first one with an STT if we were a little bit closer. Uh, a lot of people say, why do you use STT? Uh, if you use TWS, he doesn't get a launch warning. Yeah, that's true, but if he's, you know, competent in any way... Uh, there's his missile. There's his missile going pit on me, so we're going to go cold. And that's going to force our AIM 54 c active as we defend here. But uh, if he's worth anything, he's going to assume that a missile is coming at him. He's not going to wait for an RWR to defend. Uh, which is kind of what that guy was doing there. You could see him cranking to the opposite direction. He knew, or he assumed, that a Phoenix missile was fired at him, and he was correct. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and recommit here. Once you have an STT lock, if he's inside of the MAR, or the no escape zone, it doesn't matter if he realizes that there's a, a lock. You know what I mean? Because one, he's going to make assumptions, but two, even if he defends, he's in the no escape zone. STT lock, it's a more reliable lock, and you're more likely to hit the target in that situation. Um, we're recommitting vertically here, because I think I've long defeated his R-77-1. A very good missile, by the way. Almost an AMRAM equivalent, I would say. Uh, here we go. Now pointing the nose back at him. We need to pick up a lock here. This is the problem with the F-14. Is As a pilot, at least, you feel kind of helpless, because you recommit in the general direction of where the bandit should be, and then you have to sit and wait for your backseater to do his job and try to find the bandit. And it's not always that easy, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, control that yourself. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on radar, nothing on RWR, it's kind of making me nervous. Remember the flankers have electro-optical mode, so he could technically turn off his radar and uh, find me on electro-optical. A big advantage to the flankers. Uh, the one disadvantage he has here is that I have a pretty long-range missile with the Phoenix, and there isn't a lot of terrain out here for him to hide behind. Uh, if he can find a mountain, he should stick to it. Let's go ahead and drop tanks here. Roger. Jettison those. Those have served their purpose. Okay. Okay, there they go. Tanks are gone. People were wondering what happens with those tanks. Uh, he's off the nose here when they land on the ground. There's some videos of old Vietnam tanks that have been converted into canoes, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, but if you're wondering what happens to those tanks, it doesn't matter. They just drop down and wherever they land, that's where they land. And uh, once they're down there, I guess you get to do whatever you want with them. Okay, I don't have a lock, so I'm defending here because I'm making the assumption that a missile has been fired at me. I have no... Yeah, there it is. Great. Okay, we're off cold. I'm going to try to use this very small topography here to hide See if I can drive that missile into the side of this. Yeah, the sink rate's too high, I know. Ooh, that was a tight one. <laughs> I didn't mean to go that low. <laughs> the good news is, it sounds like it defeated the missile. Whatever I did, it must have hit the side of that mountain or something. We're good. We are uh, back in the fight. I'm going to quickly recommit because I didn't fire a missile at him. And he probably has realized that by now. So he's coming back around. Jester managed to get me a lock here at 18 miles. It's pretty decent, but it's too far at my current altitude. So we're going to climb. Jester just called that an SU-27. He could not be more wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're very similar. It's a Sukhoi 33, of course. Um, he lost lock, so big thank you to Jester for uh, doing his job. No lock. Come on, man, help me out here. Oh. Uniquely frustrating radar intercept officer. That's a missile coming right at me, so we're going to defend here and pray to God that we can get away. If I get killed here, I'm blaming Jester. 
because this is going to be the second leaf where I defend. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. You've done enough, Chester. Thank you. This is going to be the second leaf that I've had to defend, and I haven't shot a missile at him. So I really hope he's not pushing me right now. But he's probably defending, but he's going to realize very quickly into that defensive maneuver that he does that there's no missile coming at him. And he will quickly become offensive again. So I got to get right back on, get my nose on him, and shoot something at him. The good news is he was kind of far. He was 18 miles away. So theoretically, if I can become offensive again, uh, we can push him off before he can run me down. There's a spike, 8 o'clock, and another spike, 12 o'clock. He's off the nose here somewhere. I've defeated that missile, we're good. That missile's on my 6 now. No locks from Jester, once again. There we go, got him locked. I had to use PAL mode. Fox 3. Anybody wondering what PAL mode is, it's pilot automatic lock-on mode. It's kind of, I can just do it as like an ACM mode, air combat maneuvering mode. I can lock something right off the nose. Uh, because it's much easier for me than it is for the Rio to do that. It's good for close-up targets. Uh, I'm defending his missile, still. And his R-77 kind of went away. I don't know what happened to it. We're Joker. We're Joker. So we're going to have to finish this fight fairly quickly. I had him locked there with a uh, PAL mode again. Keep losing the lock. I think he's hiding behind this mountain over here. I'm trying to hide from that Phoenix. That 13 miles. 13 miles. That Phoenix looks like it gave him a good run for his money. We're going to climb because it looks like he found some topography. So I'm going to try to shoot over the mountain best I can. So we're going to climb a little bit. Good, good, good. Looks like he's recommitting. Fox 3. He's on nose. Spike, 12 o'clock. Alright, and we'll defend. And he's got me locked, so pretty safe to guess he's shot a missile at me. Uh, yes, we broke lock on that Phoenix, but like I talked about, at these ranges, the missile will turn on its own radar. It'll do it at any range, but at this range, it'll actually see him uh, pretty reliably, and uh, it will attack him. Uh, he, I got an RWR, but no missile launch notification. I actually think he shot down my Phoenix. Uh, got him locked again here. Makes sense, the Phoenix is so big, it's like the size of a boat. So when that when that R-77 goes Pitbull, Fox 3, uh, it might just see that thing and just hit it instead of me, you know? It's also a very reliable way of defeating a Phoenix missile is to shoot it down. <laughs> which I think is what he did. Again, I don't know if he's trying to do it or if his missile is going pitbull and the first thing it's seeing is this giant boat coming at like, you know, Mach 2, 3, 4, 5 and uh, it's hitting that. Um, once again, what happened to my Phoenix? Where'd it go? I swear, if he shoots down, if he shot that down, I'm going to be very impressed, actually. <laughs> Upset and impressed. That was 10 miles. I was sure that was going to hit him. I uh, got him locked on PAL mode again. Uh, Fox 3, that's like 5 miles I'm defending here. And I'm going to tuck myself back behind this little topography in case he shoots at me. Look at that. Nice, nice. Slid right back here. That's 5 miles. If he somehow survives that, it's going to be incredible gonna be one hell of a magic trick uh, we're going up and I don't see a splash yet 
Splash, got him. Oh, yeah, we got him. Whew, okay, got him. Look at that. Had to work hard for that kill. Wasn't easy for the Tomcat, let's be honest about it. But we got him. 